Stay all day. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve as as a result of all your work has yet to occur. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is the go-getter energy that moves me, you, him, her, them, and they, everybody out there to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And we put all this together, all this stuff that I just told you about, we put all this together into one bundle, one package, one product, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, this masterclass, and one show that is known as Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And I want to let you know that this right here, what you're listening to right now, this is not a podcast. Now, while this will be published in the podcasting app, and many of you will continue to refer to it as a podcast, you may even hear me refer to it as a podcast every now and then, simply because I know that's what you understand it as. This is actually not a podcast. This is what you listen to here, work on your game. This is a master class. It started out as a podcast, but it's not a podcast anymore. And I'll explain to you why. Because today's topic is about the fact that we're talking words and meaning, what some people refer to as semantics. And most people will call it semantics, and maybe that's the definition, but it's much more than just semantics. Sometimes when people use that phrase, semantics, even though uh, we all know the definition of it, we use it in different ways. The same way that people might say, you know, realistic, or when somebody says reality, it may mean the same thing to all of us, but we use it in different ways. Some people, when they say reality, they're saying, you know, lower your expectations. Other people, when they say reality, they just say, look at things exactly as they are. So it can mean different things, even though we're using the same words. So when I say semantics, I don't mean just playing around with words for the purpose of playing around with words. What I mean is a lot more than that. We're talking about the labels that we put on things, how we discuss and brand ourselves and other things that we deal with in life and the effect that that branding, the way that we label things, the effect that it has not only on others, but also the effect it has on us and how we go about our work. The way that you talk about yourself, the way that you talk about the things you create, the way that you talk about your productions or your products or your services, your offerings, or even yourself plays a huge role in the way that you present yourself and the way that you go about your work and even just the way that you see your work. And the way that you see your work will play a huge role in what you do with your work or if you even continue to produce work so that's what we're talking about here today the topic once again is this is not a podcast we're talking semantics here today point number one as i already said this show is not a podcast podcasts are what do you see as a, what do you what do you think of when you think of a podcast i think of some people getting together or maybe one or two people getting together talking shit or conversing for about an hour or so on on video or on audio because now people put their stuff on on YouTube and they say, well, this is my podcast. I'm just I just happen to be doing it on YouTube, which is fine. So people talking some shit for an hour or so, half hour, two hours, slap up some ads on it, maybe get some sponsors, throw it up on YouTube or throw it up on a podcast app, add an introduction, get get a some theme music, get a, a logo, and boom, you got a podcast. And that's fine. I'm not mad at the people who do that. But what I'm telling you is that what you're listening to right here, what I do on a day-to-day basis, I'm 10 levels above that. All right, this ain't no fucking podcast. All right, this is a master class. The reason why I can't put myself in a podcast category, the reason I can't call this a podcast or allow it to be referred to as a podcast simply because I got to look at what else is out there in the game. I got to think, all right, when people think podcast, what are they thinking of? And then I'm looking at all the things that pass for a podcast these days. And I'm like, okay, that's cool what these people are doing. Listen, I listen to some podcasts. There are some material out there that would fit the description of what I just talked about. Listen, there are some people when they're talking shit, I want to listen to them talking shit because it's entertaining. It's informative. I like listening to it. I will consume it. I'll go seek it out and I'll consume it. But I want you to understand that what I give here is more than just a person you know, turning on a microphone or turning on a camera and talking a bunch of shit until they run out of stuff to say and then saying, hey, here's a new episode of my podcast. This is, a, this is as I said, 10 levels above that. So I got to call this a masterclass simply because I can't have what I do grouped with what a whole lot of other people are out there doing. This is an audio experience. All right, this is a show. This is a pod. This is not a podcast. It's a masterclass. All right, least case scenario, you got to call this a show. All right, podcast is some free bullshit that you give away to people, and they can take it or leave it. I've ascended above that level, and thus I got to give my show a new label. That's why we've set up 
the work on your game masterclass the way that it is set up and all the 1400 pieces of mastery that have been put out through this show that's the reason why i set up the way that it is set up through the game group membership etc etc which you if you don't know about keep listening you'll learn about very soon we just happen to utilize what i do here we just happen to utilize the podcast application which may be on your phone or if you listen to this on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, or whatever the other ones are, you may utilize an app that says, hey, here's where you listen to podcasts. I understand that. Again, that's just the, the platform that we're using, but this is not a podcast. This is a masterclass. All right, this is much more than what you listen to on an average show. And I'm telling you all that in point number one for you to understand, as I just explained in the introduction, excuse me, as I explained in the introduction, as I'm explaining to you here, is that the way that you label things play, has a huge role on how you see things. So when I put together a new episode of this show, I'm going to approach it a little bit differently than if I say I'm just doing a podcast. You see, if I'm just doing a podcast, then I might be walking to you know, CVS and on my walk home, my 10 minute walk home, I might just think of something and record it and say, hey, here's a new episode of my podcast. But if I say that I got a master class and not a podcast, I'll maybe I'll write down some ideas, but then I know I got to sit down. I really got to flesh out some really high value material because I'm not just throwing up a podcast. I'm putting up a master class. I'm going to call something a master class. Then I got to be given some master level value. I got to be given some master level information and I got to make sure I'm on point when I deliver. I got to make sure I come correct with what I'm giving to my audience because I said this is a master class. Now, if I said it's a podcast, again, I could just throw anything up there and it's fine. It'll be good enough. I mean, I'm good enough, skilled enough, talented enough that if I'm just making a podcast, I could just come off the top every day and it'll be great. It'll be better than 95% of the shit out there. But if I say master class, I got to be better than 95% of my own shit, 95% of my own material. So you understand the difference in how I would approach things just because I gave it a different name. So you would understand why when you give yourself a different name or you give your product a different name or your team or your organization or even another person, their work, a different name, the approach is going to change completely simply because we see things differently based on the way that we call things, based on the way that we label things. So this is where conversations such as uh, the way that people talk about themselves and the way that we talk about each other, how sometimes you may hear people saying, well, don't use those names. Don't use that terminology when you're talking to other people in our culture, African-American culture. You hear some people saying, well, don't use the N word when you're talking, even when you're talking to each other, even if you're using it as a term of endearment or you think you're, you know, quote unquote, taking the power out of the word by using it as a term of endearment. Understand that when you're using that word, some people will say, the way that you're labeling yourself is causing you to look at yourself a certain way based on your connection to that word. And if you were to change the way that you're using that word or change that word to something else, you might approach yourself, your life and see yourself completely differently. Now, there are a lot of arguments for that, and that's not exactly the topic here today. But that's another example of how when you change the words that you're using, change the labels that you give yourself and others, your behavior will change alongside it. Point number two. Today's topic is this is not a podcast. We're talking semantics, wording, and the way that our words change our actions. Number two, let's talk this word, semantics. The definition of semantics is the branch of linguistics and logic concerned with meaning. The words that we use are not to be dismissed as unimportant or they're just words or it's just the word. What is the difference? These are some of the things that you know, people like to say sometimes. Well, it's just words. It's just a it's just a label. What's the difference? Is all the exact same thing? No, it is absolutely not the same thing. It is not the, the same difference as some people like to say. The words we use are very important. They matter a whole lot. Again, if someone says my brother versus saying my nigga, do they have different meanings? Absolutely, they do. Do they make people feel differently depending on who's hearing it, who's using it, and in which and in what context that conversation is being had? Absolutely, it does. Do they elicit different reactions depending on who you're talking to? Absolutely, they do. Do they make people feel differently? Does that word, different words make people feel more comfortable or less comfortable depending on, again, where that word is used, how it's used, who's saying it and who is being said to, who is being said in front of? Does that, does that change? Absolutely, it does. They elicit different reactions. Does my girl versus my bitch have different meanings? Absolutely, it does. Does it elicit a different response depending on who's saying it and who is being said to? 
Absolutely it does. A simple alteration in wording, ladies and gentlemen, can change the entire context of a conversation. It can change the en entire context of a relationship. It can change the entire context of what you think of yourself and how you see yourself. And thus, when you change how you think of yourself and how you see yourself, what else changes? Your actions change. The way that you take your actions change. You may be taking the same action, but when you see yourself differently, that same action may produce a completely different result because you're approaching that action with a completely different energy. And because you're approaching with a different energy, even though you're doing the same action, you're going to get different results. And in addition to getting different results, people who see you taking that action or who feel the effects of that action, they're going to see it differently. They're going to experience it differently. And thusly, the results will change. And if you read in between the lines of what I just said, I'm giving you the be, do, have principle right there. You change the way you see yourself, the energy you have around yourself. That's the being part, right? Then your actions, either your actions themselves will change or the way you take those actions will change. That's the doing part. Then the result is people see your action differently. People respond to it differently. You get a completely different result, maybe a better result. Maybe you eliminate a result that you were trying to get rid of. That's the having part. So understand that semantics plays a role in the whole be, do, have principle. And the semantics is all part of the being part. And this is the part that a lot of people ignore in life when they set a goal and then they just go off and start doing stuff, taking a whole lot of action, but they never get the being part right. These are the people who say, well, I want to create some content and put it out into the world that's going to be life changing. And they start with the doing part, which is going to be called a podcast. And they start recording, and they put it out. It doesn't really have the effect that they want it to have, but they really took, took a step back. And thought of the semantics and said, instead of calling this a podcast, let me call it something else. Let me call it something that's going to give it more power. Let me call it something that's going to separate it from all the other garbage that's out there. Then they're doing would change. Instead of just slapping something up and saying, hey, here's a new episode. They would have to put more time into it, more effort into it and make sure that it was really high quality to match the label that they had given it. That's the doing part. Then the having is it would actually create the result that they want, which is having a big impact on a lot of people out there in the world because they set themselves up to have that impact. See, having an impact is not just having great stuff, is that you gotta label it properly. You gotta be a certain way before you do the thing, before you get the results. So all of this works together. What you call yourself or what you call your work matters both to you and to the others who are gonna be taking in your work or who are gonna be recipients of your work or recipients of your value or your products or your services. They'll be interacting with it and it has a huge effect on how they will perceive it. In other words, what they're even going to think of it before they consume it, whether or not they consume it. Somebody may decide, you know what? I'm not even going to consume that because it's just another podcast. But if I say, listen, this is a masterclass, you might think to you might say, all right, let me see what this person's talking about. They're going to call it that. That must mean that they think this thing is better than the average stuff out there. So let me see. Let me see what this person's talking about. Now, they might still come to the same conclusion that it's not worth listening to, but at least you got their attention. And a few people are going to you know, come through the other end of that funnel and they're going to continue to listen to your stuff and take it in simply because you were able to get their attention by telling them this is not what you normally expect. This is not the normal thing that you get. So this wording matters a whole lot. Any of you who is works in any type of marketing, you probably understand sales copy and damn near everything that we put out in the world is sales copy. Even a text message, if you think about it, is sales copy because you're selling that person on reading your text and you're selling them on responding to your text. You're selling them on giving them, giving you the response that you're after, whatever that response may be. And any of you who works in copywriting, you understand the difference in the wording that you use, different words that you use, the change in one word or just the change of a headline on a, a blog post or a sales page or an email subject line. All of those things can play a huge difference in large percentage points in how many people respond or buy or take whatever action you're trying to get them to take to do what you want them to do. All of that plays a huge role in it. So these, again, what some people call semantics or say is quote, just words, close quote, is actually a whole lot more. So I would advise you if you haven't caught on already to start paying a whole lot more attention to the words that you use and the effect that they have on you and on others. Point number three, today's topic is this is not a podcast. We're talking semantics here today and how the different verbiage that we use to label the exact same things can play a huge role or makes a huge difference in how things turn out. Number three, look at the labels that you place on yourself and ask yourself this question. How do those labels make you feel? Have you ever thought of it really? Do the labels that you put on yourself excite you? Do they make you proud to be who you are? 
Are you motivated to share your labels with other people? Someone asks you, hey, what is it that you do? I mean, I'm sure you get asked that question often when you meet new people. It's usually one of the first questions they ask. Well, what do you do? If you go to any type of event, like a business conference or something, everybody asks that question. What is it that you do? I mean, I understand that you're somehow in this field, whatever the conference may be about, but what do you do specifically? People always ask you that question. What do you do? When you're on the internet, you probably have that somewhere in your bio somewhere, what it is that you do. So that label that you put on yourself of what you do and who you are, let me ask this question. Are you proud to share that label? Are you proud to let other people know about it? Are you motivated to make sure as many people as possible know the label that you put on yourself? How do you think your labels make other people feel about you? And actually, you don't even really have to think about this one. All you have to do is, is look at their results. Next time you ask somebody, well, let's go to the last time. Last time someone asked you, what do you do? And you answer the question, by telling them what your labels are, however you describe yourself and your work, how did that person respond? How'd they feel about it? What did they say? Did they say anything? Did they say, oh, okay, cool. Was it something that they heard before? Was it boring? Are you bored by it? Because if they were bored by it, you're probably bored by it too. If you're excited about your label, I guarantee other people will be excited and intrigued by your label as well. If you're not excited by your label, other people are gonna hear it and they're gonna say, yeah, okay, cool, that's fine. How do you feel about the labels that you put on yourself? And how do other people feel about it? Usually they're gonna be exactly the same. You're excited, other people are gonna get excited. If you're unexcited, other people will be unexcited. If you don't like the answers to the questions that I just gave you, how about you change your labels? I mean, why not? What's stopping you from changing your labels? Now, it's gonna require a little bit of creativity on your part. You might have to think a little bit. You might, have, you might need a little bit of ingenuity. Maybe you can enroll somebody else to help. You might need to go online and do some Googling, maybe get some ideas. But you can change the labels that you put on yourself anytime that you want. I once went to a, a hospital and the front desk person, they had a nameplate right there. The, the, as soon as you walk in and nameplate said, had their name and then it said happiness manager. That was their role. Now, question for you. Is happiness manager a lot different from administrator or secretary or front desk attendant? Hell yes, because first of all, if their label had said front desk attendant or administrator or most secretary, I would not have remembered it and I wouldn't be mentioning it right now. If I told you that there are two written pieces that you can read, all right, two things that somebody wrote down, you can read either one. One of them's written by a blogger, another one's written by an author. Which one do you think is gonna be better? Which one do you think is gonna be higher quality? Would you rather be, if you're working at the front desk, of a business, would you rather be the front desk person or would you rather be the happiness manager? And the ha now the happiness manager himself, actually it was a woman, the happiness manager herself, let me ask you this question. When she shows up to work every day, knowing that the label on her nameplate that everybody sees says happiness manager, do you think that changes the way that she approaches her job? As opposed to front desk person or secretary or administrator. I mean, if I tell you you got to deal with the administrator when you walk into a building, you have a certain you have a certain vision of what that experience is going to be like. But if I tell you when you walk in and you're going to walk to the front desk and you're going to deal with the happiness manager, do you have a completely different perception of how that conversation is going to go? Yes or no? Of course you do. Now, if I gave you the title, if you worked at my building and I said your job is the front desk person, your job is the administrator. There's a certain way you're going to come to work every day. There's a certain expectation you have of what work is going to be like that day. But if I tell you that your job is happiness manager, would you approach work a little bit differently? Would you show up expecting a different experience? Of course you would. Now, that might be unconsciously expecting a different experience, but knowing that your job is the happiness manager, you are going to approach work a certain way because you know your job is to manage everybody's happiness. True or not true? If you were, the, if you were a janitor working at a building, that's a certain level of work. There's a certain level of expectations, a certain, a certain mindset that you're going to bring to the job because you're the janitor. But if I said you're the head of maintenance, you might stand up a little straighter. You might walk a little bit taller. You might be a little bit prouder. You might tell people about your work in a little bit different way. You may be more open to telling people about what you do and sharing your labels with others, knowing that you're the head of maintenance as opposed to being a janitor. What about being a tour guide versus being the executive of experiences? Is there a difference between the two? I would think so. What are some labels that you have or have given 
that could use an update that would both excite you and everyone who came across that label. Think about the labels that you put on yourself now. Again, the ways that you would describe yourself and the ways that you would describe your work. Think about how you could change those labels in a way that would make you more excited, that would maybe renew your, your vigor when it came to that work and what you were doing. And the labels that you put on the things that you do, maybe the labels that you put on people who are around you or work for you or work with you. A simple change in language can change an entire situation. It just takes a little bit of thought, a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of creativity, and that little bit could pay off a whole lot. All right, There's a lot of leverage in changing the way that you label things and the semantics that you use around yourself and around the things that you do. Let's recap today's master class which is this is not a podcast today we are talking semantics words and meaning which much, much people most people call semantics but it's a lot more than that as i've explained we're talking labels how we discuss and brand ourselves and the effect it has not only on others but on us and how we go about our work point number one this show is not a podcast podcast is something that people get together talk shit converse for an hour or so slap some ads on it get it a logo an introduction introduction some theme music and boom i got a podcast but i'm 10 levels above that how am I 10 levels above it? Because I decided that I'm 10 levels above it. And then I go deliver on my decision. This is not a podcast. It's a masterclass. It's an audio experience. The least case scenario, it's a show. Podcast is some free BS you give away to people who can take it or leave it. But when you ascend to a level above that, you give your show a new label. Now you tell people, okay, well, you could ignore a podcast, but you don't want to ignore a masterclass. We just happen to utilize, again, the podcast app. But this is much more than the average podcast. And that just illustrates the point. Leading into point number two, let's talk semantics. Definition of semantics, the branch of linguistics and logic concerned with meaning. The words we use are not to be dismissed as unimportant. They matter a lot. My brother versus my nigga have different meanings. Do they elicit different reactions? Absolutely, they do. My girl versus my bitch, they have different meanings. Do they elicit different reactions? Do they get people to think differently about themselves and about others? Absolutely, they do. A simple alteration in wording can change the entire context of a conversation, the entire context of a relationship. What you call yourself or your work and the people around you matters both to you and to them and how other people will perceive you and them. Point number three, look at the labels you place on yourself and ask yourself, how do they make you feel? Do the labels you place on yourself excite you? They make you proud to be who you are? Are you motivated to share your labels with other people? How do you think other people feel about the labels that you give yourself? Do, they, do, do your labels make you memorable? Do they make people remember who you are and want to know more? Or do they make people say, oh, okay, cool, and dismiss you? If you don't like the answers, how about you change the labels? I once went to a hospital and the front desk person's nameplate said, happiness manager. Let me ask, is that a lot different from being an administrator or a secretary or a front desk attendant? Of course it is. And does it affect how that person approaches work every day? Absolutely it does. Does it affect how what you expect when you walk up to the desk and you see happiness manager, you probably smile because you're like, well, okay, all right, this person manages happiness. They're probably going to be pretty nice as opposed to an administrator who might be an asshole or a complete bitch trying to stop us from getting where we want to go. If I told you there are two pieces written and you can read one or the other, one of them is written by a blogger. Other one's written by an author. Which one do you think is going to be better quality? Probably the author. Why? Because we think differently of authors than we think of bloggers. Happiness managers versus front desk people. We think differently. A janitor versus the head of maintenance. A tour guide versus the executive of experiences. What are some labels you have given or have yourself that could use an update that would both excite you and everyone who came across that label? Because a simple change in language can change an entire situation. If you do not have the Leadership Bundle, which is my three best books on people skills, relationships, and communication, it's 25, 25 Reasons to Quit Worrying, 25 Conversation Starters, and 55 Daily People Skills. You can get that at workonmygame.com slash LB for Leadership Bundle. That's workonmygame.com slash LB for the Leadership Bundle. Work on your game. Dre all day.